Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Welcome to your channel for music and sound design using modular synthesizers and new technologies as well as building things yourself. Today we're going to talk about the Dust of Time module. You might have seen my previous video where I built this one. This is the DIY version and this is the factory version that you get when you buy a pre-built Dust of Time module from Michigan Synthworks. The Dust of Time, to me, it's one of the most amazing modules that you can get for your rack because of how much stuff it packs inside. It's incredibly deep. It's actually a complete digital monophonic stereo synthesizer with two oscillators. Both oscillators are stereo from the get-go, and there are quite a few different synthesis methods, modulation sources built in, VCA built in, sub-oscillator built in, effects built in, four assignable CV inputs, two gate inputs, there's a gate matrix there are gate generators in there there are auxiliary outputs that are also assignable so that you can send any of these modulation sources out elsewhere to your system and despite being so deep the navigation system is very intuitive because all of the encoders and potentiometers are also buttons that open contextual menus related to whatever function each knob is performing so let's start by turning on this rack it's going to plug in the cable back here and as you can see, it loads up fairly quickly. Boom, there they are. Now, the first thing you notice is some little arrows. It remembered the patch that was in there last time I used it, and the knob positions need to be set to the way the patch has been loaded. Here, the macro is in the middle, and the scan is somewhere over here. Okay, when you first turn it on, you probably feel a little bit lost. You don't know what to do. So let's quickly go in here to the system menu. This right encoder over here. We can choose and load one of my init presets, which is sort of a blank slate. So let's turn on the oscilloscope here so we can see. Now, in order to hear this, we need to bring up the frequency, and there are a few ways to do that. One of them is to just press the Hertz button here, which is everything related to frequency. The navigation for the display is done with the two encoders and these two buttons over here. These are the screen buttons, okay? As you can see, they're not labeled, so they're not menu buttons. And the buttons actually change octaves right up to four octaves and then it jumps back down to minus four octaves this is semitones up to 11 right and then it wraps around to minus 12 so you can go from minus 12 to plus 11 with the semitones and here you have sense which is a fine tune now if i bring the octave back down this module actually has a midi input right here it's a trs midi so i'm using an adapter from the midi output from my arturia key step to TRS right here and it takes either one of the standards so Korg or Arturia or make noise it doesn't matter it'll recognize MIDI so click on oscillator back here let's set the MIDI channel to one and there we have it now I can set the pitch by playing the keyboard here very simple now we're hearing sound all the time which you might not want so here's another quick thing to do when you're starting out. Click on the I.O. button over here, and this chooses which page you want to edit. So right now there's a routing page. This is how I like my routing, actually, where the effects are applied to the oscillators, and then the sub-oscillator gets added in, and then they go through the VCA. VCA right now is open, as you can see here, but we can assign it an envelope generator, envelope generator number one. Right now, when I play, you get that envelope generator affecting the amplitude. Right now, I want the sustain to be a little louder. Sustain is a little bit low. So, if I click on the modulation button over here, it's going to show me that envelope, and I can choose sustain over here. Here's what you edit, right? The buttons change pages on the envelope generators. So this is shape, source of modulation, modulation, and length. Now length in the case of sustain becomes amplitude rather than length. One interesting thing about this envelope generator is the sustain doesn't necessarily stay steady. You can make it ramp up slowly or ramp down. And right now the shape is a setting of two, which is actually ramping up. So we're gonna change that to zero so that our sustain stays steady. 
Now we'll go back to length over here and we'll just dial that up to almost the top. We do want it to be a little bit softer after the decay. So here we go, that's better. Now the release is a little long, so let's go to the release here and let's go to the shape page and change it to a linear response. And now we'll go back to length and we'll make that a short release for now. Now, another thing I want to mention about this envelope generator is that it's not just an ADSR. It actually has a hold, a delay, which right now is set to zero milliseconds, so it's responding immediately. Now, here's the attack, and we have a fast attack. The shape looks like it's a little bit logarithmic. We can make it linear if we want, or we can make it exponential, right? Right now, it's so fast, we don't really hear much of a difference. There are different exponential shapes as well. I'll leave it linear for now and let's go back to length here and yes every single one of these envelope segments can be modulated and the assignment is very easy and internal so now I'm pretty happy with this envelope so that we can explore some of the synthesis methods that are built into dust of time now let's go to the OSC here and uh, the scan knob is pretty much a crossfader between the two oscillators, right? You see the little arrow over here? This is to edit and listen to the oscillator on the left and this is the oscillator on the right, okay? On some modes the scan button has a global uh, setting as well which is the middle position. In this case you can only choose between left and right. I'm gonna now show you a little shortcut. The system key doubles as a shift key. So when you press and hold it, instead of going to the system menu, you see the options for the shortcuts, right? You have a MIDI panic, which can come in really handy. That would be this button over here. It says MIDI panic right there. Now we press it again, and the IO button now becomes a shortcut for the VCA. And right now it says use, and I clicked on it, so now it's through. So this allows us to, let's go back to the oscillator screen here. This allows you to keep the VCA open so that we hear what's going on with the waves without me having to hold the key down. Now quickly, another shortcut, as you can see, we're looking at the waveform and it's very similar to what we're seeing in data over here, but there are different visualizations for the scope that you can get with the shift key as well. So let's hold shift and we can cycle through here Oh, that's the save, sorry. It's the save state. The scope is actually the effects button here. So we changed it to scope 2, and that allows us to see the stereo. So you can see what's happening to both sides of each oscillator. And right now we're not modulating anything in a stereo way, so they look the same. Now if I go back to the shift and press the scope again, now we get sort of an XY representation which can be pretty fun. And let's go back to zero, which is the standard, the default. Now, you've already heard me twiddling over here, these two knobs. Basically, these are the two parameter knobs for the oscillator number one, and these are the parameter knobs for oscillator number two. And each synthesis method and variation assigns different parameters to be controlled by these two knobs right here. So the basic is just a wave that you can fold and tilt. So this folds it, right? The top knob folds it and the bottom knob tilts it. I really love this one. It's actually my favorite and most used synthesis method is the basic sign. It's the sound of dust of time for me, it's this thing. But it goes well beyond what we're hearing right now. Now one thing I should mention is all of these knobs are click pots, so I can press down on one and it opens a modulation menu for this control, right? And right here it says off as modulation source, but I can choose, for example, LFO1, and then I have a virtual attenuverter here to set the amount of modulation, right? Now if I press mod here, it'll go to that LFO1, and I can make it faster or slower. Very nice, right? I can even apply 
a modulation source to that LFO speed, for example, CVA, right? So if I send just the voltage from select two over here into that A, I now have manual control over the LFO speed. In fact, that's what the macro knob is for. The macro knob is assignable to do anything you need. So I can choose macro to be my modulation. And now I have onboard manual control over the LFO speed. And that's affecting this parameter over here. If I click on the bottom button, then I can do the same here. I can choose a modulation source. Let's choose a chaos attractor. The x-axis of chaos attractor number one. Let's go to that. So it's super slow. I'm gonna make Thomas go a little faster. Thomas is the type of chaos attractor that I'm using, right? And I can change that and I can see ACT or whatnot. So now we have this animated timbre waveform, right? Because we assigned internal modulation sources to the timbral parameters of that oscillator. Okay, so let's go back to no source to off here on both of them because I want to show you the different synthesis methods that we have available in this module. So we'll go back to the VCO page and here first I'll show you, well this is the basic, right? We've already looked at it. Let's change it to triangle from sine wave to triangle. And as you can see, you have a, a whole different range now. Again, it's the same. The bottom one tilts that triangle, and the top one folds it. So it's a tilt and fold. Very cool. Next one is SH saw. And here you have, it looks like you can make it into sort of a super saw. And modulating this can sound very cool too, sort of like a saw pulse width control. Right, I'm not gonna do that right now because there's so much to cover that I have to do it sort of quickly. Here's the seesaw. I think this is similar to the braids algorithm called seesaw which as far as I know is a CS80 kind of saw wave. And then here we have pulse. So this seems to be an integrator that softens the, the pulse waveform. And this is a pulse width, I think. Yep. So you have PWM right here. And a little bit of integration or filtering on this top one. Now on to two pulse. This one multiplies the number of pulses per cycle. So it sounds like a sync, like oscillator sync, right? And the bottom one is pulse width again, which is kind of like a symmetry control in this case. And listen how it's the top parameter kind of sweeps through the harmonics. Very cool. Definitely sounds like sync. Cool. And that's it for the basic. So let's move on to the next synthesis method, which is swarm. So swarm is very cool. The first control is like an amplitude control. And the second control is a detune with movement. And it can get pretty, pretty extreme right there. Let me turn the volume up a little bit. So this is the swarm oscillator. 
This is actually a filter, I think, the top one. I can make it brighter or darker all the way down to silence. Very nice. Now here, let me just quickly show you the the scan. Remember the scan mixes in, it's a crossfader between the two of them, right? And here we have a basic sine one, right? And we can have a blend of both. Now if I want to animate this crossfade, it's very easy. I press the scan knob and I can apply a modulation source to it, which can be the LFO one, right? And I can also attenuate and in fact cross it in stereo, the modulation. So now, now we're starting to get a stereo effect, right? Very cool. Let's make that LFO, there you go, our macro knobs are LFO speed. So we can make it less extreme. If I wanted it to not be stereo, I can keep it like this. And I can just make it more subtle. Right, the next setting can make it stereo. And I can change parameters between them. Right? And then we're starting to get more interesting complex sounds that way. But I'm getting sidetracked. Let's go back to the synthesis methods, okay? So let's just remove modulation over here and uh, turn this towards the left so we're only listening to oscillator one again now the first variation of the swarm mode is swarm static and this one like the name says you can change the settings manually and when you leave it it stays right there so you get a static timbre But of course, you can animate any of these, right? Just pressing here and choose a modulation source. We'll leave it at off for now. Let's go back to the oscillator screen. And that's it. Those are the two variations you have for the swarm uh, synthesis method. The next synthesis method is organ accumulator, which is a tribute to Neutron Sound's most famous module, arguably which is a wavetable oscillator called the organ accumulator. And here you have that classic wavetable and ways to morph between different waves here. I really like this one. Now the variations are cool too. This is three oscillators. So the first parameter is a separation of the three notes. So right now, they're all the same. As I start to turn it, you get a detune that slowly starts opening up to like chords. That sounds very nice. So yeah, although this is technically a mono synth, there are ways to do chords with it. Here's the third option. It's called Fix One. Very cool. And that's it for the organ accumulator variations. Let's change to the next synthesis method, which is the harmonic oscillator. This mix in the harmonics to the fundamental, and this one adds harmonics. And right now we have it set to all harmonics. 
regardless of if they're even or odd or whatnot. Sounds really nice. The first variation is even. Very cool. And remember, you can always automate this guy, right? Give it another fill. Let's leave it at zero for now, though. The next variation is odd. So now we get the odd harmonics. And you'd think that's it, but you also get the prime harmonics, which is a very different distribution. Very cool. This is especially cool with some reverb and delay on it for ambient kind of things. And then you have H notes. And now you have an FMR Lou. Looks like a kind of a sync. Yeah, it looks like it's resetting that sine wave at different spots. And then you have FMR High. Which is a different distribution. And that's it. That's it for the variations on the harmonic oscillator mode. Let's change it to the next one. This is FM. FM, you know, frequency modulation synthesis. Very cool. Now over here, instead of getting various variations on the synthesis methods, what you get by pressing the right encoder is the multiplier section, right? So you can toggle between the two multipliers, and this is a three-op FM synthesis algorithm. So it's two into one FM synthesis. I can change the multiplier on this one, press the button, change the multiplier on this one, and we start getting very different sounds. This is a very fun one. Very intuitive kind of way to play with FM synthesis. Oh, I just noticed that my pitch band is way too much. So let me show you how to quickly change the pitch band. We'll go to Hertz here. We'll put it in the middle. With any of these menus, you can change what you want to edit by pressing the left encoder and then you can change pages here. We have three pages in the Hertz menu. So one is tune, and that's just to tune the oscillator. So you can go up and down in octaves, semitones, or cents. And this is pitch modulation over here. Now, pitch modulation on the left side gives you just that. You know, you can use an internal modulator to modulate the pitch of this oscillator, the left side one, or you can use an external input to do FM with an external input. Hold on, this is annoying. I need the VCA to be back on. So let's turn the VCA back on so we get a little bit of silence. Here's an important detail. Inputs A and B are high sample rate. They're almost audio sample rates. They're like 20 kilohertz more or less. So up to 10 kilohertz can go in here without any aliasing to do audio rate modulation of the pitch or any other parameter. The C and D inputs are three kilohertz. So these are definitely more suited for slower moving modulation sources such as sequencers, LFOs, and so on. Sample and holds maybe. But yeah, I can actually send an external oscillator into input A over here, assign input A to this parameter and change the range. So right now it's just five cents up and five cents down, which will be barely noticeable. And then when you turn to the right, you can do the same thing to the right oscillator. And for both of them, you have separate controls for left and right. So you can make the frequency modulation be different for the left and right sides of these stereo oscillators. So that's another way to create stereo separation between them. But when you put the scan knob in the middle position, then you get global controls for the bender and glide. 
right? And glide is even modulatable. You can send velocity to the glide control, for example, and when you press hard, you get an immediate pitch change. When you press soft, you get a slow glide, for example. But right now we just want to make this bender more musical for use with the keyboard. So I'm just gonna give it two semitones up and two semitones down for both oscillators one and two. And no glide for now, but this is where you would set the glide, right? You can choose the modulation and the amount of modulation over here if we wanted to. Now, now as I use my pitch band strip here, then we're only getting that one step. Back to oscillator mode. Let's go back to just the left side and uh, move on to the next synthesis method, which is noise. So this is really handy. I really like it. It's just the white noise with the filter. So it's, it's wonderful for sound design if you want to do some winds and maybe all you brought was a small skiff and uh, dust of time is in there so you can do, you wouldn't expect to be able to do this with this module, but you can. It sounds stereo to me too, which is nice, right? And this is the resonance of the filter, so you can make it more whistly or more like ocean sounds. Now the variations, basically you get a bandpass now. Also with resonance. And you get a toad. It's a different kind of noise. This is more like a granular kind of noise with some filtering. And it responds to pitch CV, right? I'm using MIDI right now, but it definitely changes when you play different notes. Let's go to a low note. So the closer I turn it to the left, the more tono it is. And then this is sort of just a filter. And towards the right, it gets more chaotic, more noisy until you barely recognize a note. That's toad. Here's grain. Grain I really like, because you can make like, uh, you can make it really slow and make it sound like record crackling. See? This is like vinyl record noise. This is a really cool noise algorithm. Quite a few of these in this module. Next one is sine noise, which I think is just a sine wave that you modulate with a noise. So this is how much noise. And this is, this is just a folder. So you can fold that wave. Cool. And here we're seeing how there's a phase difference between left and right sides here, right? This reminds me to show you the stereo page. There's two ways to get to the stereo page. One is pressing I.O. here and then pressing the left encoder. And one of the pages, as you flip through them, is where we'll edit some of the stereo settings. So right now it says none over here, but we can change it to detune. So now we can see how one wave is moving relative to the other, right? And the macro controls how much. So this is stereo detune, right? And I can change it to phase. And here's Haas. Very interesting. Now here we have equal panning, but we can change it to pan. So now that the LFO one over here which is also being controlled by the macro knob because we assigned that. Now we can see that there's an amplitude change, alternating amplitude on left and right sides. 
and we can make that both more extreme and faster right now by turning the macro knob up a kind of like a Leslie effect and this is a global for both oscillators All right, let's go back to equal here and let's go back to slight detune. Oh yeah, in the middle is zero. You're inverting towards the left. So this is acting as an attenuverter right now. Now let's go quickly back to oscillators here. We'll turn towards the left and this is our sine noise, remember? The next one is called clock, and this is a very digital kind of crunchy kind of a noise. And this is basically a filter for it. Where you have resonance here and frequency here. And it does respond to pitch control. Right? Higher pitch will get you a sound that's closer to white noise and lower pitches will get lower density noise. It sounds more like a Tari 2600 explosion or something like that. And then the next noise algorithm is AVG. And it's also a very digitally sounding one with a kind of a filter effect here. Looks like knob 2 does nothing on this one. And sync. This sounds like in like digital interference. Like the kind of thing you're usually trying to avoid. <laughs> but in this case, it can be used musically. Yeah, this is like the amplitude for it. And some kind of a frequency shift effect. And it also does respond to the keyboard control, to the pitch. Yeah, this thing is a sound designer's dream come true. It's a real palette of sounds. Has pretty much anything you might need as far as synthesis methods. Here's the walk, our walk noise. Sounds really nice. Sounds like a noise with variable color. This could be cool for like a hi-hat type or snare drum. Here's a test noise. This is cool. Very glitchy and weird. Wow, this one is cool for like atmospheres. Here's a drone for a spaceship. Add some clouds to that. Very cool. And that's it. Those are all the the noise algorithms. Test, rock, sync, AVG, clock, sine noise, grain, toad, bandpass, low pass, and that's it. Next synthesis method is ring. So this is a ring modulator. Three procedural sine waves modulating each other, it says on the manual. And this is as it says braids, this variation I think is based on the algorithm from braids. Very nice. Here's a first variation, it's PM. Very cool. 
and pretty stereo. I don't know if you can tell. I can certainly hear it in a very stereo algorithm. Here's the loop algorithm. Very cool too. And that's it, loop, PM, and braids. Next one is vocal simulator. And this is based on the braids Vozim algorithm. You can make robot voices and stuff. You know, I can apply envelope generator to modulate this thing, right? Let's make it a little more. Well, why don't we use envelope generator two? If I press left encoder, I can choose which modulator I want to edit. This might be a good opportunity to show you the different modulators as well. There are four envelope generators, four LFOs, and the LFOs include sample and hold shapes, and they can be synced. There are two chaos attractor generators, Two fusers, the fusers are basically ways to combine, mix, multiply, subtract, offset, etc. So you can have more control over the modulators. You can send two modulators to a fuser and then send the fuser to a modulator parameter. Extra are basically pressure, mod modulation wheel, bender, BPM, hustle, on time, the pots for both oscillators, the scan, the macro, etc. So all these are considered extra. And then you have the sub. We haven't talked about the sub yet. The sub, the way to hear it is to go into the I.O. here, choose the output page, and then we can turn the left knob until we get a volume control for the sub. And that's basically a crossfader, right? Now we're hearing a sub octave oscillator here. And when we go to the modulation menu and choose the sub, we can change the waveform. So you can have something that's not a sine wave, that's harsher, a little brighter than a sine wave. And then you have the subharmonic generation, you know, which subharmonic you're generating with that sub. This is just one octave below right here. This is two octaves below. This is different. All together. And also you can have it follow the global frequency or just the frequency for oscillator one or two. So these are the settings for the sub oscillator. You can have it free with the button over here. You can have it start at zero. You can have it start at 90. So this is the phase control for the sub oscillator. Let's go back to IO and turn that sub a little bit softer. Now let's go back to modulation and choose our envelope number two. And we want this one to not have any sustain. So there we have it. And uh, we want the decay to be a little longer. See, now we hear how it's affecting the parameter on number one here. See that? That's the signal coming from that envelope generator number two. By the way, this thing responds to MIDI velocity as well. Go here to I.O. and we choose minimum velocity. If we put it all the way up, it won't respond to velocity at all. If we put it all the way down, then the VCA actually responds to velocity. We'll leave it. No velocity for now. Sorry, I keep getting sidetracked. Let's go back to the synthesis methods here. There are no variations for the vocal simulator. This is the only algorithm for right now. I mean, Jim is always updating this firmware, so don't be surprised if someday we get other vocal simulators over here. 
So let's go to Wave Edit. Wave Edit is a mode where you can load into the SD card your own waves that you design using the Synthesis Technology software program, just like Piston Honda and the Synthesis Technologies wavetable modules. All right, and there's some variations here. So this is the XY. This one's called 2Z. So this one allows you to have a second pitch. So it can be just a detune, or you can separate it enough to make a bichord. And this one, this one morphs between the waves. Next one is Samp, and this one treats the whole wavetable as a sample, and you can affect the addressing here, I think. Top knob is kind of just a filter. And then you have 2GR. Not sure what this one does. Right, and those are the wave edit variations. Now, filter. This one is interesting. What it does is it takes the oscillator from the other side and pipes it through here, and this now is just a filter. With resonance. So this is the low pass. And it's affecting this. So now all four controls are affecting my timbre because these are folding and tilting the wave, right? Because this one is in basic sign. And this is filtering it. Second option is band pass. Third option is high pass. Fourth option is called FK, which I'm not sure what it does. Interesting, it does some kind of glitching. Interesting. Some of these are experiments that uh, Jim tried and didn't do what he wanted them to do, but he liked them anyway, so he left them in here. And that's it for the filters. And now here we have hacks, which is exactly what I just said. These are some some modes that Jim came up with that uh, didn't quite do what he wanted, but he liked them anyway. Sounds cool. Now the first variation is Amp. Very cool. Next one is called Len, which I guess means length. So what this one is doing is it's changing the length of that sort of stepped saw there. And this is sort of just a brightness control. Interesting, very interesting wave. The next one is the M saw. Again, just kind of a filter brightness control here. And this control is what does stuff to the waveform. You know what? I want to turn off the sub because it's confusing us. Sub, down. There you go. So we can really just hear what these waves sound like. Right? Go back to oscillator mode. 
and that's it for the hacks and it wraps back around to basic now here's something cool another cool feature that you have let's say we're listening to the left side and we want to prepare the right side before we fade it in right we want to choose a synthesis method and whatnot so what i can do is press our shift key which is the system key and the oscillator button now becomes blind mode so we'll turn blind mode on and you get that arrow blinking that indicates that we're actually visualizing this side over here so when i turn the encoder you don't hear that change because it's affecting the other side so i can choose swarm here and set it and now when i fade into it it's already there kind of like a dj q mix kind of an idea right prepare something be able to visualize it before it's actually heard and that's a cool feature as well so blind off let's go back turn that vca back on oh it says vca use so i guess our vca is open yeah there you go our vca is open over here let's change that so that it responds to envelope one Now this module has a quantizer too. So what if we remove our MIDI control and I'm going to connect the gate output from my mux slicer that's on the other rack over there. I'm gonna plug that into gate input number one here. And then we're gonna take the pitch output, the com IO output from mux slicer and plug it into the volt per octave input over here. Let's create a sequence that doesn't vary that much. Now this is not tuned to any scale in particular. But if I go to Hertz here and then press the button, the left encoder button, one of my pages is the quantize, right? You can have the quantization be saved in the patch or just be global. Even if you change patches, it'll stay, right? Let's keep it in global for now. And here we can choose MIDI B as a uh, quantization source or a scale like this is the chromatic scale this is ionian this is dorian you can change the root note as well so this is d dorian right here let's make this more fun let's change that envelope one to be more percussive turn down the sustain now dust of time also has its own gate generators and a gate matrix all right, and that's in I.O. If I press the left encoder again, I can choose gate matrix over here. And right now we can see that the gate input one is blinking because that's the one we're using with the mug slicer, right? So that's the inputs right here where it says I. You have input one and input two. If we put it on input two here, then we're getting it on two gate buses now because the second input is actually assigned to gate buses one and two. Now a way to change that is I can navigate this like an etch -a sketch I can come over here and then move down and then press the button and that removes it from gate bus two. Right, and we have four gate buses available and any one of these buses can be used to trigger any one of the envelope generators or reset any of the LFOs, right? Now, we also have the MIDI. We have two MIDI channels, so there's two MIDI gates as well. As we can see, one is assigned to bus one, the other one is assigned to bus three. We also have the gate generators. There are two gate generators, right? And there are these two rows over here. And right now they're not assigned to anything. But let's pull this out. Let's assign gate generator number one to gate bus number one. Navigate to that, press the button. Now, as I press the left encoder from gate matrix, I can go to gate generator one, which is the one that we're using and there are quite a few different kinds of gate generators I'm only going to show you one right now because again this is going to be super long video already so Delta Euclid quantize eg segment so you can choose a gate to be generated at the start of any segment of any envelope threshold you can send it a modulation source and set a threshold level and it'll generate a gate that way but let's use the Euclid here I can set how many steps 
I want my Euclidean rhythm. And this is how many hits that are going to happen within that number of steps. And here is where you can shift the whole thing. So you can offset the pattern. This is where you set which gate bus you want to reset it. Let's just leave it at MIDI clock. And here, this button sets what gate bus is going to clock the Euclidean rhythm. So we have gate bus 1, gate bus 2, gate bus 3, and gate bus 4, and MIDI clock as well. Let's choose gate bus 2 for this one. And let's go back to the gate matrix. And right now we have nothing assigned to 2. So why don't we assign uh, the first input to trigger gate bus 2. And gate bus 2 will be our Euclidean clock. So let me take those gates from the mug slicer again. We'll plug it into number 1 here. Now we're getting that Euclidean rhythm. Those hits coincide. Let's change that to a, to a pitch that's actually useful. So I'll go to the Hertz page, click on Tune, and press enough buttons to go up in octaves. So cool. So when I go back now to I.O., I can change my Euclidean settings. So this is 15 length, nine, nine hits in a 15 step sequence. And you have two of these, so I can have a second one doing something else. Resetting an LFO or triggering a different envelope generator and so on. So that's super cool that you have the gate matrix, the gate generators, and now, last but not least, is the effect section, right? If I press on the effect here, right now we have no effects selected. I can press this and choose one of these effects right here. And these are not your usual stereo delay or, or reverb type of effects. So this one is the zero point modulator effect. We can choose a modulation source for it. And what it does is like a VCA, but it'll only change the amount of amplification when the input signal crosses zero. The next effect is called amp, which is an amplifier with soft clipping and the amplification can be modulated. The next effect is called more pork. <laughs> it's a ton based wave reshaper. I have no idea what that means. So this is what it sounds like all up. That's what it sounds like, all down. Why don't we uh, disable the VCA again so we can hear uh, continuously. All right, so it's like a distortion. Very cool. More pork. The next one is called Max Amp. And this one maximizes the level it can be useful for quiet parts of wavetables. If your timbre is changing dynamics too much, this one will maximize the quieter parts. Next one is called the Fold. It's a wave folder. How about we go back to a sine wave here? I just turned scan towards the left and brought down the two controls. So here's the manual control of the Fold. You can modulate it as well. Put LFO1 to modulate it. Oh, the clipping is coming from our uh, Euclidean rhythm. It's resetting the LFO. Let's go here to our LFO 1. And indeed, over here, we're getting a reset. So let's click this button until we get it to free. And now this LFO is free. It's no longer synced to anything. Right, back to the effect setting here. So yeah, any of the LFOs can be synced to any of the gate buses as well. Next effect is called Asymmetry. So this one will create a, like an offset that changes the symmetry of the wave. And it does affect the timbre considerably. The next one is called WTF, which is a distortion that is dependent on the shape and frequency of the input. Very interesting as well. 
so it'll change according to the frequency. Let's plug that MIDI back in so I can use my keyboard. Let's go back to tune here and uh, bring the octave back down to zero because now we're controlling it with the keyboard. Back to effect here, change the effects to WTF. This is what it does to the sound. Interesting option there. And here's the sample rate. This one's cool. It's a fake sample and hold based sample rate reduction. And here is this is the modulation. We can modulate it with a LFO one again if we want. And here we have a crush, which is the bit crushing. So it does both sample rate reduction and bit crushing. Very cool. Sounds really nice. And the next effect is called Rezo, which is kind of like a bucket brigade simulator. You have your length control here and it only goes up to 2048, which is a common bucket brigade value. Here's your feedback value. And here's your dry wet control. Right? So we can have a feedback. Let's turn on our VCA again. So, there we go. So we can really hear that. Oh, and you know what? This one will sound better with a different routing. So let's go to IO, click on the encoder, change to output, choose that, and turn until we see routing up here. Now we want the effects to go last. We want the effects to go after the VCA. Oscillator, sub, go through the VCA and then through effects. Now hear that? Now we can hear that uh, decay that's generated. Let's turn off the modulation so it's static. Right? Now as we change the length, it's kind of like a pitch control for that resonance. The feedback becomes like a decay, and the damping is a way to darken that decay. So yeah, kind of like a Carpus Strong synth. Even sounds kind of like a spring reverb. So it's not like you can't have some kind of reverb with this module. Okay, and the last effect is a filter. Here's the high pass. Here's key follow if you wanted to have key follow. So yeah, there's a filter that you can apply end of chain as well. What else can I tell you? I think that's it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit like, subscribe, check out the dust of time. You can build it yourself or you can buy it ready-made. And that's it. Join my Patreon, comment below, subscribe, hit like, and stay noisy. See you soon. <laughs>